How's it going guys? Today I actually was asked to do a review on bearings by a YouTube user. I'm going to let you guys know first off in the first couple seconds, this is probably going to be a very long review, so if you're not interested in bearings, uh, best to just click away real quick, otherwise I'm going to go over um, the maintenance of a bearing, what um, ABEC stands for and how you can determine what bearings are best for you, and just a little bit of facts in general about bearings. So um, I actually wrote a product knowledge packet for my job at Zoomies and I actually wrote a lot, a lot of different things in general but one of them was bearings. So I'm just going to literally read exactly what I wrote for uh, the company. So there's a couple of things for criteria. Bearings are what determine the speed of what you skate. It's not necessarily, it's not even the wheel, because the wheel, all its job is to do is to roll. The bearing is what actually gives it speed, momentum, and all that. ABEX stands for Annular Bearing Engineers Committee, and the committee rates the accuracy and tolerance ratings of bearings. So when you see an ABEC, or some people know it as ABEC, it's ABEC, because that's actually the grading scale that they use for each one of the bearings. So next thing is the number after the ABEX stands for the grade of the bearing. Five being the standard median grade for bearings. The lower the grade, the more durable but slow the bearing is. And the higher the grade, the faster the bearings become, but the durability of the bearing decreases. Like some people think that they have to get Swiss when they skate. That's not true. Um, I actually don't recommend getting Swiss unless you are going to use the bearing to its absolute fullest potential. With Swiss, you need to be able to actually skate fast all the time. That way you actually, it's kind of like getting a high performance car, but only driving it in the city. You're killing the car by not using it to its potential. So, next thing is, uh, the lower the grade, the less maintenance. Um, in a way, it's true. I would still maintain the bearing regardless if it was a higher or low grade, but um, with that, you don't really need to maintain it quite as much. You don't have to check up on it too, too often. Again, I would just do it regardless. Um, skate bearings tend to not go higher than 7 on average. Anything higher than that is used primarily for longboards. Again, it kind of goes with the statement that I made about if you're not going to use the bearing to the fullest potential, don't get a high-performance bearing. If you're just gonna do like go really slow and just skate flat, you know, if you're gonna do like San Francisco skating, then definitely go for a little bit of better grading. But other than that, um, you know, something like reds would do fine. And uh, bearings of a higher grade are used on boards that are meant for going at high speeds at a constant rate because if the bearing, such as ABEX 7 grade, was used for street skating, doing a lot of rapid start stopping for tricks, it degrades. The bearing faster than if a lower graded bearing that is slower but more durable is used to rapid start stops. The only bearings that can be cleaned are the once they become dirty are the ones with at least one rubber shield. Bearings with two metal shields can't be cleaned if anything such as rust, dirt, water, etc. gets inside them. Metal shields are locked in the bearing from the inside, attempting to remove them, risk damaging them, or possibly breaking them. And uh, so, I mean, that kind of was an overview of you know, the parts of the bearing that most people don't either understand, never took the time to learn, because I mean, I didn't learn them when I first started skating, I just thought ABEC, like seven, the higher the grade, the better I wanted to get. Um, so, with the last thing I said about the uh, opening the bearing up, like with the shielding, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. I have Swiss, all I skate is Swiss, but then again, I love going fast. That's my, one of my favorite things to do when I skate. So I'm going to show you how to take these apart and again you can only do this with a bearing with a removable rubber shield so use something thin like you can use a razor blade um, a knife just something very thin that you can get between the rubber right here and then the metal so I don't know if I, I can see how this is gonna work so that way you guys can actually see it so you put it in between the shield I think I got it. Yep. So now that it's out, there you go. You expose the ball bearings that are inside the bearing. Now, to maintain this, 
Um, usually with the Bones family, like uh, Reds, Super Reds, Bone Swiss, Ceramics, that kind of stuff, they already have something in set, like the oil, it's the same thing that you'd find in the little speed cream containers. Uh, you know, you can find it usually at local skate shops, and it's kind of like, in a way, you're uh, putting in new oil for your car. Um, every time you get a new set of bearings, think of it as you're getting a complete oil change, and then in between that, you're just adding oil in between the changes. Uh, so with the speed cream, you want to definitely make sure that you have speed cream in uh, your bearings in that they're actually uh, well lubricated. That way you can actually get the most spin out of them. And what I would do is I just designate uh, one side of the bearing as the top and the bottom. So, you know, one offset. So you got up here is the top, down here is the bottom. And uh, you put one drop on each side and then... As it goes in and starts soaking in, you could spin it a little bit, and then after a while, you can go faster and faster until the oil distributes all the way through the bearing. And then get like a towel, paper towel, or something like that. Just uh, clean off the remains, and uh, you're good to go. Make sure that it's not oiled up on the other side as well, because that could actually help make your bearing pop out. So you just do a good cleanup, and then uh, how to put the shields back on? Like you put, um, like here's the black part that's on the outside. You know, the actual rubber on the inside. Um, finger pressure works. You know, just go all the way through and make sure that it's on there tight and you're good. So, the reason that you can only truly clean a, a rubber shielded one is because, uh, like I just showed you, it's not securely fastened to the outside of it. It's mostly just for show. And it's cosmetic more than anything else. I mean, yeah, it does help keep the dirt and and grease and all that out of it, but with a metal one, it's locked in just like this. So what happens is if you were to try to take something and to actually, you know, pry it open, since it's locked in like that, if you were to unbend it, you could possibly break it. So you can never lock into it ever again, like it used to. And if it breaks off, it could actually, that little metal piece that was sticking up to hold the shield in, could actually go into where the ball bearings are. And then next time you start skating them, it could start scratching up the ball bearings. It'll make it to where if they scratch against each other or the metal um, ring on the outside, if it starts scratching that, it'll make it to where it doesn't spin quite as fast, etc., etc. These Swiss are $50 a pop. And I've actually been rocking the same pair for almost two years because the speed cream. And the speed cream is five bucks. And make sure that when you're looking at the ABEC number, if you have like five is usually kind of what around I believe reds are and then you know Swiss would be seven ceramics are nine ceramic is here's the thing about that ceramic is pretty much just heat resistant it's more heat resistant so you can go a lot higher speeds without having to worry about the bearings breaking or anything like that so that's really what ceramic does for you versus if you were to get Swiss because it is metal it's a good conductor of heat it's going to get hotter and you know you could potentially break it so with the ceramics it's just heat resistant so that way you can actually ride them longer so and i know the ceramics at least in our store are 80 bucks so if you're not willing to go 50 miles an hour on a constant basis or anything even close to that don't spend 80 bucks it's not worth it you know if you're not even willing to be going very very fast if you're you know wanting to learn flat ground tricks but you want to learn stationary you know, just go with reds. If you guys have any questions or would like me to review something for you, um, just leave it in the comments below or send me a message on here or on Facebook. And uh, make sure to check out the trailers I just dropped. The official trailer for my video, Reality Check, is on my other YouTube channel, uh, DSG411. And I just dropped um, my friend Tyler's personal trailer. The dude's been on a killing spree lately, so... He more than earned that trailer, and uh, that's only uh, trick number one that he's gonna that he's got there. So definitely be on the lookout for more footage from him and from everybody else in the video. And uh, have fun skating, guys.